Yo, did you guys hear that Cedar Fair and Six Flags merged into one company? The two largest theme park chains in America and on the globe have just merged into a single company. Cedar Fair is the theme park chain that owns Cedar Point, Knott's Berry Farm, and a lot of other like really big theme parks in the US. And yeah, now they own all the Six Flags parks as well. Although they adapted the Six Flags name. So Cedar Fair is like the main owners, but they still have the Six Flags name because that has better brand recognition. What do you guys think this means for the future of theme parks? I'm very interested. Let me know in the comments below. Anyways, welcome back to Let's Build the Ultimate Theme Park. Today, we're going to be building some new coasters in the coaster pit. The first is going to be the single rail coaster that I am having circle the upper perimeter of the dome. That way, there's something to look at from the very, very top all the way to the bottom. It's going to be doing a lot of fun elements, going to try to throw in lots of airtime hills. And I have supports turned off because I'm going to come back once the coaster is finished and add custom supports myself. Now right now I'm just mostly marking the coaster. I didn't want to make it perfect on the first mark because this is like a really weird place to put a coaster. I've never seen a coaster built quite like this before. I know Mall of America in Minneapolis has a coaster that's kind of elevated above the park, but not like this. Nah, this is like its own thing entirely. I was getting a little bit crazy with this one, but it's a video game, so we're here to get crazy, right? 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 Now, single rail coasters are manufactured by the same company that makes the steel hybrid coasters, like the Steel Express, the coaster we have around the perimeter of the dome right now. And this is also a pretty new type of coaster, and Six Flags Magic Mountain just installed one of these called Wonder Woman Flight of Courage. And I still haven't ridden that one because I haven't been in Six Flags since they installed it. But I've heard really, really good things. And I have yet to ride a single rail coaster at all in my actual life. But from everybody I know that has ridden one, these things are a must ride. And I had to throw one in the park. These coasters are cool because they look so chonky. Just a gigantic I-beam that's weaving around. And these coasters are cool because they can whip around and do way tighter elements and curves than any other coaster type that has a double rail. Typically, a lot of these coasters aren't super long in length, so I didn't make this one too terribly long. I kind of kept it sweet and concise because we already have some super long coasters in the park. And since this one is so high and scary, I felt like it made sense to keep it a bit more of a medium length so the guests didn't get too terrified while riding it. And then at the top of this chain lift, I'm going to have a lookout point that goes a little bit slower since you're all the way at the very top of the dome. It's going to go slow for a moment so you can look at the park and take in the scenery before you finish up the loop and go back to the station. I think this coaster is going to be fun and you guys are not prepared for the second coaster that we're going to build today. But before we do that, let's finish touching up this coaster and also add a thrill ride that you might have already seen in the distance because I already placed it. Now real quick, let's talk about last episode's comment question of the day where I asked if you had a budget of $300 million to make a coaster based off of any property, what would you choose? This first comment said Hollow Knight, which, do Hollow Knight would be such a cool theme, making it sort of like Bugs Life, but dark, you know, it kind of because you are like a bug in that game. I started playing Hollow Knight over on my channel Wide Toucan because I want to randomize it in the future, so if you want to see me play Hollow Knight, you should check that out. This comment said a Taylor Swift coaster. Um, I would much prefer a Lil Tall coaster instead. I think Lil Tall would be a much better theme overall. Next comment said the Inheritance series about Aragon, which I loved these books when I was younger. The movie kind of sucked, but I think it would be a really cool coaster theme because Allegasia is such a cool land. And the same comment also mentions an Avatar The Last Airbender coaster, which I am all for. And maybe since we're getting the live action Avatar The Last Airbender, if you guys seen the new trailer, what do you think about that? I could see Avatar becoming way more popular and us getting a legitimate coaster from this in the future. This comment is kind of cheating because it mentions a Super Smash Bros coaster, which is kind of like choosing every single Nintendo and video game franchise out there. But... With $300 million, that's a huge budget that could actually be possible, quite possibly. And the last suggestion is based off of Fallout, which the Fallout games are great. Fallout 3 is my favorite out of them. 
starting out in the vault and then emerging into a post-nuclear environment would be sick. And today's comment question of the day is going to be based off of what I mentioned earlier. How do you feel about the merger between Six Flags and Cedar Fair? What do you think that means for the future of the theme park business? And what do you think we're going to see in these parks now that they're merged? Do you have any emotions tied to this? Do you have stock for either company? Are you going to profit possibly? Let me know. Next, we're going to put this gigantic spinny overpower ride at the very top of our entryway. It's going to be looking over the entrance of the park and it's gonna give something really exciting for the incoming guests to look at as they walk the very long path to our front entrance. I'm pretty much trying to finish placing all of the rides and coaster stations in this entryway as soon as possible so we can finish building the structure around it all so we can make the front portion of the theme park completely finished because we're 13 episodes in and it's still not done and I would like to get that finished. We'll connect up the entrance and exit so people can start riding this as soon as possible. And let's take a good look at it. Shoo! This is a big one. People are gonna love this ride. I think this is better because now there's a bit more movement when you look at the park from the front. You see the monorail cars coming through and then you see the thrill ride at the very, very top, which I think these are called Gravitrons. I believe that's what they call them in Roller Coaster Tycoon, but I'm kind of drawing a blank. All right, we place some more trains. We have three trains on that single rail. And now we're gonna place another single rail with the station starting on top of the first one. And this one is going to circle around the perimeter of the dome again, but in the opposite direction. And this one's gonna be a bit higher because I wanna fill the very, very top section and make this, I'm trying to use all my space up, <laughs> as you can tell. So this one's gonna go kind of to the very top and I do admit it's going to be a bit of a pain building the structure around all of this, but I have a plan that you guys are going to have to see in a future episode. But for now, let's start building this coaster, starting off with a good size dip. Now, as you guys can probably see, these coasters aren't too fast. They're supposed to be a little bit more leisurely, and I'm kind of focusing more on just having fun elements rather than crazy, crazy speed because not all coasters need to go fast. Sometimes it's fun to just stay at a good medium pace and go through some really fun twist turns and barrel rolls. And I'd like to remind you guys that this coaster is gonna be better after this episode. I'm just kind of marking it out. I like where it's going, but I definitely like got even better ideas while editing. That happens a lot. That makes sense, right? I get extra time to analyze and perceive the coaster, and in that time, I come up with some more creative options. It's the artistic process, and the artistic process takes time. And in my case, it takes a lot of sushi eating as well. The more sushi I eat, the more artistic I get. I think it's something that's in the wasabi that helps me think of my spicy ideas. Or circling this around. One thing that I'm not a huge fan of on this coaster is the fact that we have two chain lifts. I know I'm doing that on almost all of these coasters is having a double chain lift. That's not very traditional. But at the same time, whenever I'm riding a roller coaster, if there is a second chain lift and a little bit more after it and it extends the length of the coaster, I'd be all for it. I like longer coasters, especially if you're gonna wait in a super long line. I want to get as much out of that experience as physically possible. And also on an entirely different side note, did you guys hear they're building a new roller coaster in Saudi Arabia named Falcon's Flight that's going to be breaking all of the world coaster records? It's going to be the tallest, fastest, and longest coaster in the world. I never thought I would want to go to Saudi Arabia in my lifetime, but if they're doing that, I think I might just have to do that. <laughs> And it's going to be at a Six Flags Park as well, which is now also a Cedar Fair Park? This is going to get confusing, huh? Alright, time to test this coaster out. First drop. And if you have any ideas on how to make either of these coasters better, you know, feel free to put them in the comment section below. I've been tweaking the other coasters based off of your guys' feedback, and am not afraid to make these coasters better based off of our two-clan hive mind that we have going on. I love a good hive mind. 
Whoa. That was a kind of weird drop. I can't wait until someday when I can have an even better computer and these coasters will run more smoothly. This coaster is a little bit short. I'll probably extend it later. But at the same time, it's okay for some coasters to be short. This coaster is still longer than a lot of the single rail coasters in existence now, so all things considered, it's not too bad. But yeah, overall, I'm pretty happy with this coaster. It looks a bit weird right now, but I assure you, once we get all of the buildings built around it, it is going to be looking in tip-top shape. It's going to be a ton of work on my end, and I'm not going to really start that this episode because building these coasters kind of took a lot out of me, and I haven't been on my computer too much recently, so my capacity to be on my computer is like super low. <laughs> I don't know why, but I've been getting like really tired looking at screens lately. So I've been trying to be out like more around nature, doing like outdoorsy activities and stuff. I go through phases with computer games. Like sometimes I can play a lot and then sometimes my brain is just not feeling it. It's probably because whenever I do play them, I binge them and wear myself out and then have to take an extended break and then come back later. It's the cycle of things, but thank you all so much for watching this episode. Hope you all like these coasters. I can't wait to continue working on them. And we have a lot of decorating coming in the near future because we've built so many rides, but I haven't really finalized any of the scenery on any of them. So I'm looking forward to getting all of that done. But if you enjoyed, make sure to hit the thumbs up button and I will catch you all in the next one.